All right, everyone, we've got something special today. We've got something I've been working on um, um, for the past several months, um, doing some testing, um, looking at the community, um, coming up with what, um, coming up with a tier list for Grimdark Future. So um, been doing a lot of looking at 3.2 from a competitive analysis perspective. And uh, we're going to look at this tier list uh, for Grimdark Future. So uh, going forward, first thing to keep in mind, we've got some assumptions here. One, this is for Grimdark Future only. I know that um, OPR does share, um, have multiple games, but really Grimdark Future is, is very different than Age of Fantasy. I think the way the mechanics work, the prevalence of Armor 2, vehicles, um, it, it makes things that Grimdark Future... Um, there are certain things that are a lot more powerful in Grimdark Future than perhaps maybe Age of Fantasy, which generally I look at Age of Fantasy as a much more balanced game. Um, so let's just keep in mind, this is specifically focusing on Grimdark Future. This is also, um, so the context, the assumptions I'm making is that when I'm talking about armies, I'm talking about it in the context of a five or six you know, game grand tournament, right? So... I'm not just looking for armies that um, can potentially do well, but consistency is a big part of the game. Um, a lot of the armies that I tend to rate pretty high in this tier list are going to be armies that that do have that quality three and two for that consistency sake. When, when you have armies that have some quality fours and fives, um, those armies just by their nature are going to be spiky. And some games in that five or six game tournament, you're going to roll hot. But on games that you don't roll so great, um, those those kind of um, lower quality armies aren't going to do as well. Generally, looking at about three thousand points, I think that two thousand is a nice introductory game. But I, I I don't I think that when this eventually does turn competitive, I, I think it's going to be around twenty five hundred to three thousand. I think three thousand is generally a good point total. It three thousand feels around fifteen hundred to two thousand and forty k terms. Uh, the other thing is, of course, uh, no allies, and this was I'm using these the standard um, the standard things. So, um, the, the, keeping in mind this, this is competitive analysis. So, I do want to say that if you are looking to you know play Grimdark Future kind of just more casually, it's just sort of a gentlemanly agreement. Um, then I don't think you should even really worry about this. This is more looking at it from what could we imagine people bringing to tournaments and what are what are people going to be bringing regarding some some sort of what i call harder lists so let's look at some criteria again the first thing i would say when i'm looking and rating these lists i'm looking for either one that they're flexible or two that they just have one really strong play style i'm looking for lists that are just sort of raw efficiency so um a lot of units that are very specialized so generally no pistol or hybrid taxes um, a good spell list. Spells are very powerful, and good spell lists are going to be very meaningful. Impactful elites, so these are elites that generally fall in the quality two or three spectrum. Cheap chaff, right? Um, chaff, um, OPR, uh, and Grimdark is, is very much a trading game. So I think that having cheap chaff there to sort of um, force your opponent to sort of trade first is, is a very important part of the game. Multiple meaningful upgrades. So there's two particular upgrades that I'm looking for. One is Caster 3. I think that there's a huge difference between Caster 2 and Caster 3. So generally armies that have both a good spell list and Caster 3 um, are going to be very much more highly rated. Advanced Tactics, I think, is just one of the... There's a lot of good upgrades, but I think just like Advanced Tactics is specifically something I have to call out as being an incredibly powerful upgrade. And armies that have, generally, their versions of Advanced Tactics is going to be great. Access to Scout and Ambush on meaningful units is also uh, something that I'm generally looking at, especially hand-to-hand -hand units, uh, especially units that can come in um, and bring in things like Fast or Strider with Ambush or Scout are going to be really great. For Grimdark Future, you know, with the with the the prevalence of just a lot of armor too, access to lots of AP4 is another thing I'll be looking at. And hey, Undead. Um, undead, I, I generally view as just being better than uh, regular break tests. So I'm generally going to favor armies that are undead just because that rule is, is pretty powerful. So um, what do I mean by a criteria and how would I start 
kind of reading these from a criteria perspective to give you an example. So we're going to go alphabetically, and I, I think it's a great thing to talk about alien hives. Uh, alien hives are an S tier army. They are, they are phenomenal. I don't. I, I'm going to try to pick out a few units from each army to talk about. And with alien hives, it's sort of hard to just pick a few, but I'm going to try. So first of all, they've got some really good special rules. Spores is absolutely ridiculous. They've got surprise attack, which is a really great ability. Um, their spells compared to their army are terrific, right? Minus one Moraltus is a great level one. They've got um, flying on units that have scout and are fast and are just, it's just absolutely crazy to get flying. And then the level four regen on these characters, like their spell list is so tailored to their army. Um, a few of the things, the Hive Lord, Hive Lord's great. And this is a lot of their big guys. You can get four set three, uh, four sets of this serrated claw. That's 12 um, AP4 attacks, uh, quality two with the stomp. I mean, these guys get flying and ambush. Uh, you can give them caster. I wouldn't. I mean, the other thing that like alien hives just have everything, you know, they've got the best big guys. They've got also the best caster unit in the game. And that's synapse floaters. Synapse floaters are with their, their ability to basically get uh, a combined unit of around 420 points, gets you um, six spell tokens. These guys have stealth. They've got a psychic um, blast as well. Uh, Synapse floaters, like in addition to, um, I, mean, I, I could spend all day talking about alien hives. They sort of have the best big guys, the, the best, uh, some of the best chaff in the game. They've got the best casters in the game and they've got spells, which are absolutely incredibly powerful. Um, alien hives are just an S army that I, I think really does need to get, uh, probably does get, need to get nerfed here. So let's go into Battle Brothers. Battle Brothers, there's a lot of them to talk about here. I'm generally going to put them on the B tier. There are some Battle Brothers that I think are uh, really good. Um, like I generally an A tier are things like uh, Dark Brothers. I played a game against Dark Brothers and they are super good. Let's go to the spell list real fast. So first of all, they have advanced tactics and they've got level three casters. So that's generally going to raise the, um, the rating for me. Um, for a lot of their spells, their spells are okay. The minus one to shoot is okay. Um, and the minus four charge is okay. The, the big thing that Battle Brothers have is this time passage. This is a bonkers good spell. This two units within 18 AP2 on the charge is absolutely ridiculous. It is, this alone puts them in a B tier. And for Dark Brothers in particular, I would put them in an A tier army this is just the dark destroyers that have picked out dark assaults incredible the other thing is that these destroyers could be armed very well and that's putting them on this combat shield um heavy mace combo right this is so good with well, the heavy mace and combat shield and you can get a flail as well um wow i mean what a really good army with with dark brothers regular battle brothers um aren't equipped as well and there are some battle brother armies like uh, knight brothers which i actually would regard as actually a d tier armies some of them are c tiers but um generally speaking most battle brothers i'd put in a b tier with things like dark brothers in an a tier knight brothers i generally put as a d tier army um let's look at blessed sisters blessed sisters are an incredibly good army like such a this is one of my favorite armies it's so well designed i think that blessed sisters they they are generally falling in a a lower quality kind of that quality four or five range um devout is an amazing ability but even though they sort of have kind of that four or five quality they get access to celestial infantry which gives them plus one to hit they also get access to this megaphone, which gives them plus one to their morales. So it's actually a really well-designed army that um, although, um, first of all, it has some great chaff. Um, it's got some of the best support sisters in the game that have the highly devout, uh, which is just absolutely insane. Um, highly devout on support sisters is amazing. Um, it's got some not so great spells, um, but really... You don't need it because, honestly speaking, um, Blessed Sisters, you really are only looking for one upgrade, and that's this Spiritual Guidance. Uh, plus one AP when shooting um, is just super good. I'll just point out one as well. They've got a really – this Procession Altar, I think, is also pretty amazing in that it's got a plus one melee, protective aura, 
and a, um, a plus one to uh, morale tests. 365 for three buffs, you're pushing out a turn, some pretty good hand-to-hand -hand select. So, like, so this procession altar, I think, is like, it, Blessed Sisters have so many good units, but <clears throat> the, the buffing aspect to Blessed Sisters, it's, it's a really well-designed army that I think is terrific, but also um, just has its own flavor. Uh, it's a very, uh, very good army when we start talking about Blessed Sisters. Let's get to the Custodian Brothers. They're generally a D-tier army. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, I would, I would probably maybe a, a, a C tier army. Big thing with Custodian Brothers that we talk about is um, they don't have spells. So that right there is a, a pretty big deal, not having spells. Um, they've got some decent ones. The morale test is so much pointless. They do have a tactics, which I think is very important to the army to be able, since they're so few in number, to have an ability to move those few models around is good. They do have some decent chaff in Vigilant Sisters, which are about um, 125 for a def three and, and quality four is okay. Um, I, I think that Custodian Brothers, though, their lack of spells is, it's going to be pretty rough on them. I, I would have to rate them uh, rate them a, D -tier, a C tier army. Um, uh, so um, C tier going to D tier, but I, I still think that the armor two is surely going to do them okay. So let's let's talk about uh, Dow Union. Dow Union are a they're a D tier army. This is uh, an army that I think just has a lot of problems. Um, you know, in in this game of Grimdark Future, I think that you it is a hand to hand focused game, and you sort of can't play Dow Union as a shooty version of the game. It just doesn't work. They do have some decent units. So one thing, they're only caster two. They only have a caster two. Um, they've generally got some pretty weak spells. Um, I, I think the the biggest thing um, that they are looking at here, excuse me, I picked the wrong one. All right. So the the best spell they have is this pacification, which is this minus two in melee, but they only have a cast or two for their upgrades. So it's it's a it's a real tough thing. Um, this is just showing this front leader. They've also got some some pretty crappy special, like some of these armies just do not have good upgrades. Volley Fire, I think, is terrible. Elemental Fire Power is okay. That's the movement spell on them. But just generally speaking, they don't have a lot of good hand-to-hand -hand options. Um, I, I think that if you would really... And you need that in this game. In Grimdark Future, you've got to have good hand-to-hand. -hand, and Dow just don't. Um, the fact that a lot of their units are quality 5 means that they, they waver so easy. Even... Um, I think some of their best units, gun drones, I think are probably one of their best units, just um, running at 145 with fearless in that quality five is a little better. Um, a lot of Dow unions, you know, at that quality five, at least these guys have fearless, good shot, and they are shooting things with rending. This is one of their better units, but yeah, Dow unions, I, I think that if you're going to try and play the competitively, you've, you've really got to have a tide Titan and you've got to arm him with hand to hand, even though that tide Titan does not have um uh, doesn't have um ap4 um, dark Elf Raiders, they're another d tier army um really just a, a a real they want to be a hand-to-hand -hand army but they don't have strider in the army I, I so this is just um they have a couple of good units nightmares i think are good they're a little pricey at 155 um they've got their gene warriors which are decent um Regeneration on 75 points is, is pretty decent on them. And they've got these Gene Brutes, which are quality three and def five. But And this is also, so Gene Brutes, again, they've got the AP4 in the army, but they don't have Strider. There's no Strider in this army. Um, their spells are okay. Again, the plus two to hit and melee is generally not, not very good. Um, the regen is okay. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, the other thing is, Two level one damage spells. I mean, like, this is just a, a really bad spell list. Um, they, yeah, I mean, they've got a lot of hybrid and pistol tax units in there. Um, and just a unit that has some pretty, like, they, I think if you could get access to Strider on them, I would probably bring them up to maybe a C tier. But um, just, just, a, 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 just not a well-designed army, not a lot of good options. Yeah. Um, Dwarf Guilds. Dwarf Guilds are a B-tier army. I, I think this is an army that there was a lot of opportunities for them to make them better. Um, 
they are uh, they don't get access to region, which isn't as big of a deal. I think that magma is just generally too expensive as a rule. Um, they do have beam. The problem is, is that beam just isn't consistent, you know, and if you're trying to play this in a tournament perspective, beam and try and getting value out of beam is going to be inconsistent for you. Um, I, I think that there's just some, some lost opportunities. Um, one thing they have a terrible spell list. It's almost like they don't even have a caster. Um, so this is their spell list, which is just pretty horrendous having flying, on two units that are a lot of times slow, and then they've got a movement buff. I, I just, uh, and then a minus one to melee, just a really crappy spell list. They're only caster two. They have, like I said, beam and magma are generally overpointed. Beam, especially, is just inherently um, not, it, it, it's, it's not going to be consistent for you in a tournament. I think some of their better units are their power suit guard. The, the big problem with the power suit guard is, is that they have ambush and slow. That means you can't charge on the turn that you ambush in, so you probably have to shoot stuff. Um, they're still one of their better units. Um, I think that they're, they're... The thing with dwarf guilds, their upgrades are terrible, right? They've got caster two. The, the best thing they have is battle lore, which is the plus one AP uh, when shooting. They've got some good units, and I think that they're short-ranged, but they, I, I think there, there's a lot of opportunities to make them an A-tier unit. Again, they they don't have a lot of good hand-to-hand -hand counter punch. Their elites, these are these hammer elites, are just pretty bad both ways, either getting AP2 and magma. And and like I, I would rather give them the extra attack and some extra AP on this. Uh, so, But Dwarf Guild still, I think the fact that they're a close-range armies and they're slow, they're going to do good against maybe more hand-to-hand -hand armies, that are um they're generally going to yeah that are generally going to do okay um the other thing that um we actually need to add an f tier here because there i forgot we've got some we've got some f tier armies here so let's do let's do that um here oops sorry let me do this real fast this is an f tier army here's our d tier army because we've got elven gestures elven gestures are an they're an F tier army. I mean, no chaff. I mean, this is this is just. I think they were designed as an ally army, so I guess that's fine. But they really just have way too many. Um, just showing you just the gestures. They have a lot of special abilities. One sixty points on a def five unit that doesn't even have that you actually have to pay ten points a piece to get. I mean, to get just. Rending weapons is just super rough. They are way too pricey. Um, yeah, they're, I, I don't know. I, I think that they the, the army needs to get uh, needs to get reworked. Eternal Dynasty are a B tier army. They're they're pretty good. I think having fearless generally around the army makes them makes them pretty good. Let's look at some units. So they have some good chaff. Cyber lizards I think are pretty good. Um, whether with or without the scout upgrade, this is a really great chaff unit. Um, they've got some, some decent upgrades. I, I, I think the, uh, I, I think the, the big thing and also some decent spells, um, but the problem is they're only a cast or two as well. So, uh, I, I think that they could be using, uh, I, I think that they could be an A tier army if we have maybe a little better spell list and we had a, um, a cast or three on there as well. I think one of their best units is just the Onis. So Onis are great. Um, you can run them as heavy fists. You can give them a shield drone for stealth. Um, you can give them ambush and flying. They're a very versatile unit, um, but they can also just run pretty pretty plain, just two ten for uh, sort of some bashes and um, some AP four attacks is pretty good. So uh, I think that they're a decent army. I think having fearless on a lot of their units is pretty good. So I would generally rate uh, Eternal Dynasty as sort of a a, um, a B tier army. Havoc Brothers are also sort of like Battle Brothers. They're a, a bit of a mixed lot, but I would generally rate uh, Havoc Brothers as a B tier army. There are some thing, some of the armies, uh, some of the the Havoc Brothers that are uh, a little worse. Um, I actually think that generic Havoc Brothers are actually an A tier army. Um, they've got good spells. They also have the plus two AP when they charge. Um, they've got they've got chosen veteran as well. They've got dark tactics. So they they've got caster three as well. Um, I think that some of their armies um, 
I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I actually could bring Havoc Brothers up to an A tier in that you've got Plague Brothers and I think generic Havoc Brothers are pretty good. Mutated Brothers are 130 is very good for this unit. They have fast the mutations. You can give them wings as well for 155. Um, and the other thing I think that are that generic Havoc Brothers have is you've got Talon Raptors, which I think are another pretty amazing unit. They've got, again, 150 for ambush, and they've just sort of uh, got the the energy clause. You can also give them the Chosen Veteran as well. Yeah, I, I think I will. I mean, certain of them, I think like Lust ones fall into the C tier and Change fall generally into maybe lower B. But I think Havoc Brothers and Plague Brothers are actually pushing more A tier. Um, I'll put them in A tier just because I think that just Vanilla Havoc Brothers are super good. All right. High Elf Fleets. High Fleets are a D tier army. Uh, they are just a, a very problematic army. Um, they lack flexibility. They don't have really good upgrades. Um, they, they, of course, suffer from the pistol tax as well. Don't have good chaff. And this is an army that, in a game that you really need chaff a lot, they don't. A lot of the units are expensive. One of their best units is the, so these are the Avengers. So I think this is probably their best unit that have the shard carbines with just fast and a 3-4 that can get um, regen. They're still expensive. 185 is very pricey for a def 4 unit. Um, this is just looking, again, some of their spells, they've got that psychic, they've got that shared seer council, but it's on these um armor for one wound character so their seer council is bad and their spell list is generally pretty bad as well the blessing level three is terrible um the creator is okay and then the, the minus one is okay you just have to get within range and a lot of their casters are pretty um are pretty squishy um you can also see they they generally don't have any sort of advanced tactics for an army that's very fast to not have advanced tactics is rough um, I think that this is a good example to show you here. They don't have chaff. It's the reason they're in D tier. You need chaff in this game. And the fact that you're, you, you have to run protectors as a 10 man squad, 230 points is just, it's very pricey to bring in. They, they do need some sort of chaff options as well. This is another thing. So these are their scorpions or stingers, just 195 for them is just for just a, a def four unit with no real defensive abilities. It's just, it's way too expensive, uh, way too expensive on there. Human Defense Force. Human Defense Force is a C-tier army. It's, um, I, I think that Human Defense Force has a lot going for it. And you can do some things that are, are pretty decently powerful. I think one of the things that Human Defense Force can really do well is buff up really powerful units. I think that you could run a competitive list if you like ran a super heavy and then you like, ran a caster and you also ran like what's it take aim where you could give one unit plus two to hit between casting the level one and casting the take aim you could like give a super heavy hitting on a two up um i, I think there's something they're only caster level two but I, I think they're an exception to the rule that they do have a really awesome level one spell this is a really great one for foresight but they they just they're lacking a lot of close range fire. So their infantry squad, I would rate them at B tier if we could actually get shotguns on these infantry. Um, just you know, it, it, I, I think so. they need some of their infantry. They need to get a shotgun variant. But I, I do think this really helped them out that they were able to get an extra upgrade. So you can get a company standard in Filvero. Company standard is very important to the army as well. With a generally a quality four or five army, you need to have company standard that can that can buff up the morale tests. So I think this did help the army out a lot. I I would like to see them. Um, get they do have some hand to hand variants. Ogres, I think, are really good. They've got some cavalry, but they also suffer from the pistol tax. So they're a C tier army. I think that if you run them one specific way, they can re do decent. But uh, yeah, there are other armies that can just do it better. A uh, human inquisition or an F tier army, they're just sort of a, an army that was I don't know, not designed to really just be competitive, and that's fine. Um, infected all actually, this is an army we don't hear a lot about, and I'm going to rate this as an A tier army. This is actually, I haven't played them, but just sort of looking at their chassis, it's really solid. Uh, I'll just show you some things here. One thing that they have is they actually have a lot of quality 
three big guys that can do damage. So even though they, they the army is generally a low, a low, like a higher, lower quality army, they've got some great chaff. So they've got these leech swarms, which are terrific chaff. They've got these zombies, which are just their chaff, but they're also super tough. Just with regeneration on a like for ten guys for one hundred and five points with regeneration is just super good like so they've got some really good chaff some good sticky units they're undead so that means you get to kill them to a man and they've also got some really high quality units so they've got these monstrous tyrants here which can be armed pretty well um some of their spells they're only level two on spells their spells are okay but honestly speaking this army um is still still pretty good um i, I think that um the other thing they can do is they also have a play command, so they also have the move the the advanced tactics for them. This is a super good army. Um, I don't think people are playing it a lot, but I think it's a sleeper army. Um, Jackals are a D tier army. Um, they just they're sort of like Dow in that they are generally a lower quality army. They don't have a way to buff their morale either. They do have their carnivore, which can they have some decent hand to hand options on the army, but. It's sort of like now, without a way to give yourself some extra pluses to the morale tests, they suffer a lot. So some of the better ones, I think vultures are probably one of their best units that um, you can sort of um, arm with uh, some might be like an explosive spear or something. They're like I said, they're okay. They're uh, like their spells are terrible. Um, they only have a level two caster, so that's crap. Um, their elites. Again, they have a lot of units which have carnivore, but they're generally shooting-based units. So it's sort of, like I said, um, that carnivore, and, and as you can see, they're generally, they're, their elites are quality four, where a lot of their guys, even these uh, these uh, um, uh, veterans or uh, these vultures, um, well, they're quality four, but you, know, you can just sort of see that they're generally a quality four and five army that um, can just easily fall apart Fall, fall apart really fast machine cult machine cult are an eight tier army this is a this is a super good army they've got level three casters they've got a great spell list they've got some great they've got some really good chaff units um now they they don't have they don't have great chaff but i think their their shock priests are pretty good with with chaff they've got some great units as well i think raider cavalry the ability, like these guys with their limited phosphor and that you can give these guys, these twin, these guys can pump out like six shots a piece in one turn, just blow up something. The other thing that these guys have is they've sort of got, so they've got two things. One, they've got a really good level one that gives them plus one AP when it shoots. And they've also got a canicle, which gives plus one AP when shooting. So you can actually have a unit that can get plus two AP in one round of shooting. So it's actually a, uh, you can, you can actually do some pretty interesting things regarding uh, uh, giving some buffs to plus AP. They've got the plus one def and they've also got the minus. This is pretty good. It's a 24 inch range. Um, yeah. They've got, and just some really good upgrades, right? They've got caster three canicles. Um, just, they've also got this cult leader is pretty on the cheap side as well. Sect stalkers for 155 are a great unit. Um, I haven't, I'm not going to show everything, but the, like I said, these are some of them. They've got some really good, uh, higher quality vehicles. I mean, Machine Cult are just a really solid army. Uh, orc Raiders, Orc Raiders are an A tier army. This is an, uh, this is another just, I've played Orc Raiders uh, several times and they're a super good army. I mean, just, I almost want to rank them possibly an S tier army, but I'm not quite going to go there. But they have just some incredible units. Goblin Tanks are an amazing unit for 205. Um, with the ability to shoot their bazookas at a four up, a def three, so two up in terrain. And this is another thing, they're fast with impact three. These guys can actually just charge something and get like 18 impact attacks with a six man unit. Really good unit. I actually wouldn't arm them. I'd just keep them with their bazookas. I think their bazookas are great. Um, these are just, I mean, the orcs are just, oh, man, I almost want to rank them S tier. Um, really good special abilities. They get warning cry. They get war cry. So they don't have the movement buff, but they, they do get War Cry, which gives them an extra four inches on the rush or charge. Some incredibly good spells. So they've got Stealth, which is a really good level one. They've got Rending, two units with Rending, which on Orcs is really good. And then they've got this one, Teleport. 
teleport on orcs is bonkers good. I mean, in an assault army to give people... The other thing is what you're seeing here is you're seeing three buffs. So these got the casters can stay back. And that's very important with the goblin champ. This goblin champ for 80 points and a caster three is super good. I mean, like the, the fact that you can have these little goblin champs just hanging in the back and just casting these incredibly good buff spells on their units is so good. Let's just talk about the goblin herd as well, which is great. I mean, like orc marauders are honestly, I, I almost want to rate them an S tier, but I, I think they are good as an A tier army. I just like, man, they they are like, they're, they're one of the armies that I almost want to put in S tier. All right, let's go into Prime Brothers. Let me just scroll down here and get my notes as well. Prime Brothers are generally a C tier army. They, um, they do have armor too, but they they don't have some great weapon options. They sort of, I think that Battle Brothers just can sort of do it better, even though they don't have that armor two up. As you can just sort of see here, they have a lot of pistol and hybrid tax units. They do have some similar spells, the Battle Brothers, and they got the plus two AP on the charge, and they, they can get a level three caster. Um, but they're just, you know, they, they just sort of suffer. One of the things that they don't have here uh, is they don't have, unlike uh, Custodian Brothers, they don't get the six inch move. They don't get the advanced tactics in here, which is a, a really tough thing. It puts, it's one of the reasons I put them in a C tier army. They just, they don't have great chaff. They're, a lot of their units are sort of wonky in how they're built. I just think that there's a lot of armies that can sort of do what they do better. Um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I think that they, they do need some work. Uh, Ratclin clans are a D tier army. Yeah, just, it's sort of similar to Jackal's. In that they just they they are a low quality army to start. Um, as you can see, even their elites are sort of a four. At the very least, their elites have fearless, um, but still pretty pricey. They do get these heavy carbines. I think their elites are probably their best unit. Um, they've uh, yeah, they also have some decent um, chaff. They just they don't have a really impactful hitting unit. Um, you know, they do have the safety in numbers, which is like decent, but you, you just, you don't have that quality three to really help you out here. Um, gener generally speaking, I think that their spells are pretty terrible. Um, so just, you know, they, they don't, they, they just, I think that they need a little bit to get them in a C tier army. They do need a significant amount to get them, to get them in a B tier army as, as well. Uh, Rebel Gorillas, sort of uh, same thing with Rat Clones. They're falling in sort of the D tier. I, I think that Rebel Gorillas do have some decent, they do have some decent units like the Chelonians and the um, Simeons, which I think is being a gorilla is a little on the nose. Um, so Chelonians are, are pretty good. They do suffer theoretically from a pistol or hybrid tax. Still 200 points is pretty decent for them. Um, that's one of their better units. The Rebel Leader, again, just not great. They're not great spells. And then they only have a level caster too. So it's just, you know, they, I don't know, they feel, they just, they, they don't quite have what they need. Um, so these are their elites. Their elites do have Fearless and they have their Carbines as well. Like, they're not bad. I just, and this, so these are their Simeons. They do have some decent hand-to-hand -hand ones here. They just, um, they are just armies in the C tier category that can just do things better than Rebel. Like, it's difficult for me to to arm, to put Rebel Gorillas and Human Defense Force in the same tier because Human Defense Force are sort of just objectively better. So I I, I would almost want to rank them a C tier, but I, I really think that they do fall, fall more in a D tier. Uh, let's go to Robot Legions. Robot Legions are an A tier. They were an S tier. I think um, before 3.2, I definitely would have put these guys in S tier. They were a broken army like like Alien Hives. Sorry. Um, yeah, Robot Legion is still an A tier army. Do not kid yourself. This is still a fantastic army. Um, some of their units, Guardians. Guardians are amazing. I mean, these you you absolutely run them with the Hyper Sword. 145 for a unit that has a two-up armor save with Robot and Self-Repair. And they've got a sword. I mean, this is just an absolutely astounding unit. Um, they again, they've got, they have terrific, um, they have terrific upgrades. They don't have, you know, the plus one um, regen saves. They do get a regen save. So, like I said, their upgrades aren't 
you know, what I consider broken as they used to be, but they're still super good. Um, you know, they do get the, they get the, the Royal March here. Um, their spells, their, their, like their spells are okay, but honestly, this is a unit that you don't really have to care about uh, spell so much. Um, you can just give them the region protocol as well. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, like this, this is this is a super good army. I mean, I, another thing is that they have, so this is um, their Anaro, they don't get caster two anymore, but again, they've just got other, I mean, they've got the region protocol, they've got the Royal March that you, you sort of have have what you need with this army um tough six on this guy as well i mean like say they've got some super good characters the eternals i mean these eternals are just absolutely astounding um i think that either going for the gauze rifle i think the flux carbines are fine on them i think just at 180 for a, a def two unit that has self-repair that can just I mean, these guys at a range can do, these are some of the best range units in the game, Eternals. They can just trade with anything. Um, yeah, I mean, and then of course, Tri Scorpions. Tri Scorpions are amazing. And and I haven't talked about some of their other units, like the, the bikes. The bikes are still amazing. Tri Scorpions are terrific. I mean, like, you can give them, if you want, you can give them rending. I don't even know if it's even necessary. I mean, they're just, they're just super good. The, the thing with Robot Legions is where they have, where they, where slow is very good, like on Eternals with a long range weapon, they have it. But on Tri Scorpions and a lot of their hand to hand units don't have slow and have Strider. So as you can see, like a lot of their units just are, they're given exactly what they need. They're a very efficient army. The army, like the units that um, have long range guns can get slow to just lower their points. The units that are hand to hand units get Strider <laughs> and don't have slow. So uh, now Guardians. Guardians are just a good anvil unit. I know that Guardians do have slow, but honestly, Guardians are just a terrific anvil unit and an absolute steal at 145. Um, yeah, I mean, Robot Legions are just, they're just astounding. I'm i am really happy that they do did get some nerfs. Um, maybe a slight buff to them is to give them some decent spells, but, um, you know, I'm not going to complain too much. Uh, Saurians, Saurians are an A-tier army. And I, I think that, I would have put Saurians into a B tier army, but it is literally that Titan. That Titan alone puts them in an A tier army because that Titan is bronc just bonkers good. So this is their Dread Titan. That's a you know quality two, def two. Big thing is this vicious jaw. I mean, six seven. I, I would never buy the upgrades. Six seventy is just tremendous for this unit. Tough eighteen. This vicious jaw getting four AP four deadly attacks. I mean, this is going to murder any big guy or any unit uh, so i think this this model alone puts them into an a tier unit i think that uh, generally speaking they've got some decent spells I, I i'd like their spells to be a little better the rest charge is okay the regen is okay and the minus uh one to hit is okay i don't know i think they could have done a little better the big thing that you can do with them is you've got the primal roar <coughs> so we know that Predator gives you extra attacks when you explode on sixes. Primal War, you can pick two units. It's a cheap upgrade and it lets you explode an extra attack on fives and sixes. So I like that. Their Frog Mage is pretty good. The big thing with him is he comes with a level four caster, um, which is which is very good. And their spells are decent. Like I, I think that other people have better spells, but their spells are good. Um, I think that Sari and Guardians, what an amazing unit for 155. Quality three with Predator and getting two attacks AP two. Like this is such an amazing unit. You would you always give them the heavy shield for 165. I mean, like, this is an astounding unit. Like, just like I don't know what to tell you. Like, this this unit for 165 is one of the best hand hand units in the game. Um, and then the Spinosaur, Spinosaur, they have some really good um big guys, and the, the Spinosaur as well gets a 10 point prime war roar, which I think is worth it here. Yeah, I think Sarah and Star Hosts, they I would like I said, I would put them in a B tier, but that dread titan is just ridiculous for them um soul snatchers are an atr army this is an absolutely crazy good army as well uh, it's not one of those armies that i don't think is quite s tier i don't like i'd put them man like i want to put them in orcs like they're just almost to s tier because these guys have so much they've got one of the best level ones in the game which is I mean, the Level one that gives you plus one attack when you charge on soul snatchers is just, I mean, so like the army is very smaller than other armies, but it just has exactly what it needs. So again, bonkers level one, 
great level two at plus one defense. And also, um, how about, you know, the mind control is pretty good as well. I, I think that your level ones and level twos are terrific on there. They get warning cry is another one. The other thing that to keep in mind is they also get, uh, uh, where's it, the megaphone. So you can, if you really want these, these guys, you can have soul snatchers charging 20 inches from scout. Um, just, and so like you really have to play, um, really have to play very carefully. Um, and they also have a tactical console as well. So they, they, they're just very maneuverable. Some of their units that I think are just outstanding mutant brutes are terrific. I mean, regeneration scout with some heavy picks is a great unit. And of course, like that sort of, and by the way, alien hives also have soul snatchers. Like I couldn't honestly alien hives just is is ridiculous um soul snatchers i mean they're just an amazing unit 160 for these guys scout strider fast um it's just amazing you can give them a caster one which i think is actually pretty interesting to give them caster one put them with a matriarch and you know cast some spells but i i think that going a 10-man squad and giving them lets them cast their own plus one attack so you can actually put these guys at 180. So it's 360 to have a 10-man squad that can, on the turn they start, give themselves plus one attack, charge in for 30 attacks. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's so there's just, just a lot going on in this army. It, it almost wants to make me put them into an S-tier army. And, you know, maybe maybe I will with more games. Titan Lords are an F-tier army. I think they were designed as an ally army, but yeah, they're not worth considering. And let's talk about Wormhole Demons. They're sort of like Battle Brothers. They, they've got a mixed bag. Like they've, I want to put them in A tier. I want to put them in B tier. Where do I put them? Um, I will generally put them in a B tier army. I, I think that they are going to do great against shooting based armies. The, the problem is, is that Wormhole Demons are going to run up against Alien Hives. They're going to run up against Orc Marauders. They're going to run up against Soul Snatcher Cults where their special ability just doesn't do them any good. They do have some decent chaff. They've got the putrid, which is really good. So plague swarms are really great on them. Um, so they have some decent chaff. Um, they've got some pretty good spells too. Um, so the big thing they have is putrefaction. It's not as good as time passage. I'd much rather them have a level three. It's still pretty good, giving them plus one AP for two of their units. It's also when they fight in melee, so you can use it defensively. Um, stealth is okay. Um, it's not going to be a big deal because they're going to be ambushing and scouting in anyway. And I think pestilence is decent. The big thing that, but honestly, putrefaction sort of makes the unit good. Um, you can give them a blessing of plague. The, the they also can get you can get mutations as well. I think that you you really are counting on your avatar of plague to do a lot of work for you. So he's he's one of these guys that can just do a lot. He's got his four symbol of plagues, which symbol of plague is just roll two ups and. You know, it's once per game. So on one turn, he can just, you know, bonk four units, cast some spells. So he's got one turn where he can just just do a lot. You can uh, you can arm him with uh, some decent ones. I, I you, you know, there's all his upgrades are pretty decent. I think I the, the gauntlet I like, maybe the deadly. Um, but but yeah, he's he's sort of what you need. I think he's the X factor in the army. I I, I think that Wormhole Demons in general. As I've said, they they're going to do great against shooting armies. But the moment those wormhole demons go up against soul snatchers, go up against fork marauders, go up against alien hives, it's sort of like their special ability is almost a negative because these these armies can just do it better than them. So I, I don't think there are certain armies like lust um, demons which are just a c-tier army as well so i would put wormhole demons in in generally a b-tier category as well so that's the that's sort of the overlook at 3.2 I, I think i i actually like that there is a lot of good a-tier armies in here like my standard i'd like to get every army up to sort of an a-tier category i think there are some armies that do need some work in in d-tier and c-tier but I, I do think that the A and B tier is pretty good. Um, and then, I, like I said, I, 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 I'm just going to outright and said, I think that alien hives do need some nerfs. Um, they're just, they're, they're just, they're sort of an army that just has oftentimes the best of everything and just really, really should be looked at. Um, but, uh, and again, I'm talking more from a purely competitive standpoint, but yeah, I think it's, uh, I, I, I'll still stand by that.
All right. Thanks for watching. You can always provide feedback. You can always like, subscribe, and comment. Uh, thanks, everyone.